All right, well, obviously, Janae's not in here getting this review session and an extra one, uh, per se, even though she is in study hall right now. So let's go ahead and talk about preparing a buffer. It's all about the Ka and the ratio. All right, if asked to describe how to prepare a buffer a, at a certain pH, uh, you always want to think about the H plus concentration. And of course we know that that H3O plus is going to be that Ka uh, over the concentration of the acid divided by the concentration of the base. That's our super duper equation, right? That looks exactly like our super duper equation. You already forgot about it. What is wrong with you? Don't forget about the super duper equation. All right, so you may be asked to prepare a buffer. Obviously, you know you're going to need a salt of a certain anion, and you're going to need uh, you know, a weak acid, or so forth. So let's say we'll use 0.1 molar to 1.0 molar solutions of uh, reagents and choose an acid whose Ka is near uh, the H3O concentration, H3O plus concentration you want. We know that, don't be confused, we know that this also could be H plus, don't freak out, this equals H3O plus. I know you're looking at me cross-eyed right now, but don't do that. Okay, uh, or it's pKa should be as close to the pH desired as possible, and, the, and adjust the ratio of the concentration of the acid to the concentration of the base to fine-tune that pH. All right, it's like tuning up the band. All right, it is the relative number of moles, not molarity. There's a big difference of acid slash conjugate base. Don't forget that this is conjugate base here. All right, conjugate base. And of course you know that then that would have to be the conjugate acid. All right, that is important since they are in the same solution and share the same volume. This allows companies to make concentrated versions of buffers and let the customer dilute. This will not affect the number of moles present, just the dilution of these moles. So on the exam, never fall for the trick of what happens to the pH of the buffer solution after the addition of 250 mils of water. Yes, the acid and base are diluted, but the ratio is the same, and that is what matters in the buffer. Important, when equal concentrations of acid and base are present, which occur at, uh, which occurs at the half the equal balance point of the titration, the ratio of acid-base equals one and therefore pH equals pKa. All right. Let's go ahead and move on. Almost just a problems. You, I know you guys are, are anxiously waiting for me to do problems. So we'll do those problems in just a second. There are three types of titrations you'll be dealing with. Strong acid and strong base. Well, you gotta know these net ionics. And guess what, folks? I'm gonna go ahead and do another online review of uh, net ionics and the equation writing with the rest of the problems that we did in the other review session. Anytime you have a strong acid in the base, you make water. Everything else is a spectator. Thanks. Thanks for stopping by. Say, go ahead and say hi. Hi. Who is that? Aaron. Say it so everybody hears you. All right, see you later, Aaron. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. All right. Only when the acid and base are both strong is the pH at the equivalence point seven. Any other conditions? Uh, and you get you get to do a nasty equilibrium problem. Oh, we don't want to do that. It's really a stoichiometry problem with a limiting reactant. The excess is responsible for the pH. Just deal with what is left over. Be sure you are in moles. If the additive volumes are given and you recalculate the molarity after doing the stoic work. Don't forget, obviously we gotta use, this is always the ending part of any problem, calculating the pH from negative log H plus. It's always the end of the problem. Uh, okay, so now there's three types of titration problems that you're gonna be dealing with. One, uh, this is the second one. Weak acid and strong base. The equivalence point is gonna be greater than seven. Of course it is because bases have a pH of, I don't know, eight, nine, 14, okay? So if I have something that's a weak acid, 
and a weak acid would be around seven. All right, or maybe like a 3.5 to 6.8, something like that, weak acid. And we have a lot of the higher stuff. And of course, the pH, the equivalence point is gonna be above seven. You should know that. Four zones of interest along the titration curve for a weak acid and strong base. Zone one, the pH be, uh, before the titration begins. This is simply a weak acid problem. At this point, you should be smart enough to know that you can do an ice, but most of the time that ice is just gonna be the X squared because the concentrations of the two ions on the other side are just gonna be X and X, uh, where X equals the concentration of H plus or H3O plus. Zone two is the pH during the titration, but before the equivalence point. Once the titration begins, the weak acid has reacted with a strong base to produce a salt and water. The salt is the conjugate base of the weak acid. The salt is the conjugate base of the weak acid. Okay, so where is the conjugate base of the weak acid? That's what you say. Well, Mr. Hey, we know that. There it is right there. This is a buffer problem. How is it a buffer problem? Well, we're adding those things in there. All right, remember that the amount of strong base equals the amount of weak acid reacted, amount of salt made. Plug in the amount of weak acid left over, uh, left, and the amount of salt made into H3O plus in the concentration. Caution, time saver. At half the equivalence point, the weak acid equals the conjugate base form, thus H3O plus equals Ka. All right, zone three of that weak acid and strong base. At the equivalence point of the titration, all the weak acid has been reacted with the strong base. The only species left are H2O and the conjugate base of the weak acid, the salt. The pH, so if you do get asked what the salt is, just think of that, you have to say, well, the only species left are in the conjugate base of the weak acid. So let's, so if we had HC2H3O2, H2, well, that means that acetate uh -huh, is a salt. Wow. Wow. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. The pH is based on the salt's hydrolysis properties. The molarity of the salt and equivalence point must be calculated. Remember the amount of strong base equals the amount of weak acid reacted, which equals the amount of salt made. The molarity of the salt in the solution is this. Moles of salt formed divided by total liters of solution at equivalence point. Must use Ka of the weak acid to calculate the Kb of the salt and then use KB equals that, find the pOH, and then convert to, to OH. Well, of course we know pH is gonna be 14 minus the pOH. Once we get pH, we do negative log concentration, or we, we have the pH, so then we're good to go on that. If you were just calculating concentrations, you'd be able to do that as well. All right, beyond the equivalence point, it's all about excess, calculate the amount of excess Strong base at a beyond the equivalence point, and then recalculate the molarity. Okay, now we did zone three, and then last but not least, uh, you would do a weak base and strong acid, just like the weak acid and strong base above, just flip flop the process. The pH is going to be less than seven, chopper. Okay, important notes there is a distinction between the equivalence point and the end point. The end point is when the indicator changes color. And we know that we have to have those memorized, those indicators. And most of the time, they're gonna use phenolphthalene, and you gotta know that that's pink. If you made a careful choice of indicator, the equivalence point, number of moles equals number of moles of base, acid equals base, and the end point of the titration will be achieved at the same time. When choosing an indicator, determine the pH of the equivalence point, then pick the indicator, it has a pK close to the pH and equivalence point. Buffers and titrations, cheat sheet. Uh, 
the super duper handy equation. Of course that's in there, are you kidding me? Super duper equation. And oh, this is just common face, this is common face. We know this, you know this, you know this. So make sure you memorize the super duper equation. Zone of interest along the titration curve for a weak acid and strong base. Initial pH, simply a weak acid, so that's a weak base problem. Boom, we can do that. Simple ice, you don't even really need to do the ice because take the molarity you're given, x squared, and then the Ka value will be given in the problem. That should be a, a quick time saver for you. All right, Ka is given in the problem. During the titration, buffer, 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 it's a buffer. Use the super duper equation. Uh, equivalence point, the salt, only salt and water left. And you gotta know that. The salt is either a weak base, if a weak acid was titrated, or a weak acid, if a weak base was titrated. We're gonna as such. Where X equals H3O, concentration of H3O plus, or KB, where X equals H3O. And beyond the equivalence point, this is a stoichiometry problem, find out how much strong acid or base is left. Recalculate the molarity. Remember the volume increased during the titration and use a negative law. And buffers and titrations, cheat sheet, and I'm almost to some wonderful problems that I know you're so excited. Be aware of the, the volume of a strong, uh, of strong added to the titration is halfway to the equivalence point. All right, hey, uh, here where H, H3O plus equals Ka because concentration acid over the base is one, the same amount of weak acid and its conjugate are present. Huge time saver, an easy way to calc find the Ka or Kb of the weak thing. No ice needed. If you don't even know what ice is, you should probably stop watching. All right, in the titration problem, always know the equivalence point, equivalence point. Buffers, only need to use the equation this. And who's got to base and vice versa? Don't be tricked. Never select a strong acid or base as part of a buffer solution. It has to be weak. All right. When a buffer solution is attacked, remember if the attacker is a strong acid, the base component is sacrifices and reacts to the invading acid, converting it to water and more weak acid, thus resisting large degrees of pH and vice versa for the hydroxide. All right. Equilibrium uh, and stoichiometry, potential pitfalls, knowing when to need Ka or Kb, recognizing the weak organic bases. Be aware of when you have a weak acid base or base is present that the conjugate cell, hello, you're in the buffer zone. You are waiting for me all to get to these lovely prompts. Wow, I don't know if I could do this one, so I'm gonna need a little help from my friends. Hey. Hey, Kermit, are you over there? Hey, Elmo. Hey, buddies, how you doing? Big Bird, nice to see you. Okay, hey, Big Bird, do you know how we can write the equilibrium constant expression for the reaction represented above? Of course I do. Let's see if we can do that right now. Well, hmm, I already know that this is a base because I said it like 55 times this year. So all I have to do is write my KB. Well, let's see if I can do this. Concentration of my products over the concentration of my reactants, not including water. We don't need to do water. Why would we do water? That doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about. Okay, now you say, well, can you calculate the pH of a 0.15 molar solution of ammonia? Hmm, well, I better be able to do that because I'm an AP student and I'm awesome. All right, so this is what I do. KB equals X squared over the molarity. Oh my God, what a time saver. <laughs> it's so good. Of course we know where X is gonna equal the concentration of the OH minus. All right, so I got 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth is gonna equal X squared over my molarity. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I think I can do this. 1.64 times 10 to the negative third um, equals x. And then we got to do negative log 
of x equals POH, which equals 2.784. And we're going to have our pH being obviously 14 minus 2.784 gives us a lovely handy dandy 11.216. Okay? Next. Are you leaving or something? A 100 mil sample of the 0.15 molar solution of ammonia is titrated with 0.10 molar hydrochloric acid. Uh oh, uh, we got strong acid, strong acid warning, strong acid warning. Look out for the strong acid. So what we're going to do is determine the volume of HCl required to reach the equivalence point. Well, of course I got to do this. 100 milliliters. Where am I getting 100 milliliters from? Times 0 0.150 molar. Well, where am I getting this? Here you go. Yay. And that is going to give me, well, remember how we did this earlier. I'm going to do some millimoles. It doesn't matter. You can choose not to do millimoles. You can. Remember, all I'm doing is taking this M and putting it right in front of my moles that I got out of this. Because remember, this means mole per 1,000 milliliters, whatever, something like that. So I have that, and then I gotta go X of my milliliters times 0 0.10 molar equals 15 millimoles of HCl. Oh, okay, then I'm done, because they're the same. 150 milliliters HCl, I'm done. All right, because these two matched up and they are the same. All right, that wasn't really hard. All it's asking you is if you can actually calculate it. Make sure you know that this is HCl. I don't know what that looked like before. All right, next. Calculate the pH of the solution at the equal balance point, the equivalence point. Well, we can do that, no problem. So what we're gonna do is take R. Uh, make sure we know at equal, uh, equivalence point, the pH depends on the salt. pH depends on our salt. I said it like a hundred times in this video. It depends on salt, NH4 plus. All right, so we had at, equiv at equivalence, I love saying equal balance because it reminds me of balance electrons, in case anybody's wondering. 15 millimoles, NH4 plus. 250 milliliter total. Well, how are we getting that? Well, that's from the previous slide. Okay, we had to add those up. Therefore, what we're going to get is NH4 plus equals 15 millimole divided by 250 milliliters. And then, oh, all of a sudden I'm out of millimoles. There goes that thing, right? So now I'm back to moles per liter. 0 0.060 molar. So then I have to plug that in. Ka equals Kw over Kb. And that's going to equal 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10th given to me in the problem. And Ka equals x squared over m, where x is h plus or H3O plus, whatever, however you want to say it. I usually do H plus. So then I got 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10 equals X squared over 0 0.060. 5.77 5 times 10 to the negative 6 equals X. Negative log of X equals pH, which equals 5.24, okay? That should be pretty easy. I didn't really do anything mind-blowing there. All right, so I'm going to pause it here because you're coming into class now. Have a wonderful week. Just made for you all.